Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you through the paintwork on this blue Suzuki Swift, painted in Boost Blue is the name of the colour, and the paint code is ZRZ. So it's metallic, and it's got pearl in it as well, this colour. So I just gave you a quick look at the colour there. It turned out that it was a touch on the red side, so to kill out the red, I ended up putting a touch of lemon yellow into it, and I also lightened it up a touch before I painted it. So as you can see, the prep work's already been done in this job, and uh, I'll just be taking you through the masking and paint work on it. So as far as the prep work goes, for this blended area here, this blend door, uh, we just rubbed the entire door down with 800 grit, and we then went over it with the 800 soft grit uh, soft pad, and um, now we just got it in the booth after blowing it off, and wiping it down with a rag and now we're masking up. So uh, we've also got a new fender off this car and also a new bumper bar we're painting as well. So it's a fairly small job. It's a pretty standard job that we get in the panel shops. Uh, it's a pretty nice car. So I thought I'd take a video of it. I've always liked these um, Suzuki Swifts. Nice little uh, zippy car. Pretty handy around the city and stuff like that. So nice colour on it too. So I'm just doing a bit of a soft edge on that top edge there just for that one bit because I can't get in behind it properly. And next up we're using the um, big sheet of plastic. We'll just drag that over the entire car, open it up and then we'll cut around the door. So it's important that you get this plastic up the right way because if you get it upside down the, um, the paint will actually end up flaking off halfway through. I had that happen to me once when another guy masked up a car for me and he didn't take notice of which way the uh, plastic was up and I just thought, oh yeah, the car's masked up, sweet. And I went in and started painting it and um, halfway through the plastic uh, started flaking all of the paint off and it made a big mess out of my paint job. So, learn from my mistake, always check that what other people have done is correct. So just, I was just obviously careful when I'm taping around uh, these edges that we don't cut through too hard because you don't want to cut into the surrounding panel. And um, yeah, we're just taping down, making sure there's no little uh, gaps that can come through. So you notice when I'm doing that, it's mainly in uh, big uh, pieces of tape. If you've got too many, if you do for that top edge and for the bottom edge and this front edge here, if you've got five pieces running down, there's more gaps and there's more areas that uh, possibility that you can uh, have a gap and the overspray is going to come through so that's actually the main reason I do nice big long pieces of tape. Just uh, tuck all that under there because you want to make sure that we don't um, have that flapping back in your paintwork, that plastic down the bottom there. And now we're just wiping it down the entire job with uh, wax and grease removing solvent on these uh, degreasing cloths. If you're using water-based, they've got a specific uh, cleaner that you're meant to use. But I'm using um, just a normal old uh, prep sole wax and grease remover because I'm using solvent-based paint on this job. So it's just a wipe on and wipe off. Ensure you're wiping it off until it's actually completely dry because if you uh, don't, well, then you can actually be left with a film in between. So I did that on the rest of the car as well, and I edited it out. But um, same with this step. I tacked cloth the entire job down wiping it over at least twice. Sometimes I might do it even three or four times, just to be sure. <coughs> and um, what I'm doing here is I'm actually putting down a ground coat. Um, so I had a look on the bench uh, and there was actually some old blue from another job and I put that with this other blue and I found a, a good ground coat. So it ended up that for this job I only actually ended up mixing up 350 mils of colour, which is pretty efficient. And uh, had I have not used this ground coat, I might have needed 400 mils or 450 mils or something around there. So this is just one coat I'm just putting down just to get the basic coverage and make it so that it's blue before I put my blue on. So my blue is a slightly different colour, it's a bit deeper and it's a bit, bit of a darker blue. But this gets me in the local, in the basic area of uh, coverage. It's going to help that top coat cover a lot better. So I'm using the Devilbus GTI Pro uh, with the HVLP air cap on it for base coat. 
settings on this, open the fan right up, have the fluid wound right out for base coat and um, set it at approximately 1.7 bar which is about 25 ish psi. On my last coat I'll uh, crank it up a little bit to about 2 bar to um, allow the effect in the metallic to stand up a bit more. So this is our top coat, you can see our switched guns there. I'm just um, blowing the air over that bar on a couple of spots so that it was still dry, but you can see that it's really drying nice and quickly. It's, it's already dulled off, which means that the um, paint's already started to flash off. If it was still shiny, like you can see those wet wet patches, then uh, I'd give it another minute or so, but starting to uh, warm up where I am in the world, in Perth. So. I actually love spraying in the heat, there's no waiting in between coats, you can just bang bang bang, smash the jobs out and get on to the next one. Also using uh, solvent base is uh, a lot quicker for in between coats. I do love my solvent base, a lot of guys um, like the water base a bit better but um, yeah, I find just solvent base is a little bit quicker. Sometimes you can uh, have better coverage on the water base though, so for some of your reds and your greens and stuff like that, um, you'll probably get better coverage, so it can end up speeding you up with the water base, because you got to do so many coats on the solvent. But there's ways around that by using ground coats and stuff like that, which you saw me just use then. So it's starting to get covered already as you can see this is only my first coat of my proper colour and it, it's visually already covered. You'd probably find that if you put it outside it would be slightly different colour because you'd actually be seeing through my top colour to my bottom colour. So we will put another couple of coats on just to make sure it is 100% covered. So you can see straight away I just came straight back to that door and it's already by the time I'd put my coat on the other panels it's actually already right for me to go. So. I give this bumper bar a couple more minutes just to, to flash down a, a, a bit and we'll blow some air over it but it's already starting to dull down so in between this coat and the next coat I did uh, just give it a couple of minutes between my tech coat so the, the next coat that we're going to be putting on is what we call the, the technique coat or the effect coat, tech coat and it's just, as I mentioned earlier, we, we crank the pressure up and it's just a light, quick coat. So the idea of what I'm actually doing is that the, the metallic uh, particles um, have two sides to it. It's sort of like a piece of paper. It's aluminium is the metallic uh, metal that's in there. But the other metal that you have in these uh, mica colours, in the pearl colours, is uh, the name of it is actually mica. And it's actually, instead of having two sides like the aluminium does, it's got uh, five sides to it. So um, the light will reflect on the different angles. So if you put it on too heavy, and basically um, it's going to flow in with the paint. Uh, like the metallic will actually lie down and uh, you won't actually, it won't be standing up and you won't actually be getting the reflection of the... Um, light on those uh, metallic flakes, so um, yeah, hopefully that makes a bit of sense to you. So you can see this last coat, it's really just a, a, a real dust, like sort of medium wet type light coat over the entire thing. It'll increase the flip on the colour, so it in it'll increase the amount that the colour changes in the different lights. So now we're on to our clear coat. I'm putting the first coat of clear over the entire door here. If I was doing a light colour like a silver or any light metallic colours, I'd probably only put one coat over that rear edge of the door because it can actually change change the colour a little bit. And um, I'm actually using the Devilbus GTI Pro light with the TE20 air cap instead of the... Um, the HVLP which I was using on the base coat. 
settings for this gun is same similar. Uh, you open the fan right up, and the pressure settings are a little bit different. So uh, I'm using the pressure at 25 psi, which is actually a little bit lower than the HVLP air caps. Um, and well, I'll set the fluid a little bit different too. So the fluid's at about 2.5 turns out. Um, that's going to vary on the temperature of the day as well and the climates. I might adjust it in the hotter months. I'd probably wind it out a little bit so I've got more fluid hitting the panel and um, I'd probably uh, wind it in a little bit so I've got less in the colder months, so less chance of getting runs and stuff like that. Also, I might change my hardeners. I might, might use faster hardener in the colder months and slower hardener in the warmer months. We've got a quick look at the car at the end of, uh, when it's all finished off, so hang around and check that out. Give my channel a subscribe. Check out my channel as well. I've uh, spent a bit of time making up some playlists, so have a look at them, see what you think. You feel uh, more than welcome to ask questions, comment down in the boxes, and uh, give my vids a like too if you like what you see. Check me out on Facebook as well. I've got a Facebook page. There's a link in the description video of every video of my videos. So Facebook link down there. Check it out. So I ended up uh, in between coats. I decided to go out and I cleaned out my two base coat guns. So that gives me a good five minutes uh, in between coats of clear. That's one thing that you've got to make sure you do. You can't blow the air over the clear coat like you saw me doing on the, um, the base coat because um, you'll end up having bits of dust land in it and you'll end up making a mess out of it because it dries differently. So the clear coat basically dries through the chemical reaction of the hardener that we use in the two-pack clears and uh, the base coat dries through evaporation of solvent. So it's similar to your washing on the line, it just dries through the evaporation, whereas this clear coat is actually, it's got the hardener in it, so. The second coat, I might be slowing down a little bit, and I might jack the pressure up just a touch, because a um, little something that most painters know is that if you go a little bit higher with your pressure, you're probably going to get it a little bit flatter, so um, a little bit less orange peel in it. If you have the lower pressure, then you'll probably get a bit more orange peel in it. Now, you're never going to get totally dead flat finishes, but what we're looking for is uh, replicating uh, what the rest of the car has. So when a car comes in, we hopefully uh, finish the job and uh, we don't want any traces of our job to be there. So we want, want it to look like it's brand new from factory. which this trade is uh, not an easy trade by any means. There's a lot of variables, a lot of, lots of mistakes that can go wrong, like stuff like colours and runs and prep work and sanding scratches and all that kind of stuff. Uh, believe me, I've been doing it for a long time. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely got its good times and bad times. But um, so I've, I've actually noticed you go through uh, just bad patches. Sometimes you have a couple of weeks and it just seems like nothing can go right. You know, it'll start off, you'll get a run, and then you'll um, get a colour wrong, and um, that's something that it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this for, it's just going to happen. Um, anyone that says that they never make a mistake is uh, just bullshitting. <clears throat> so yeah, this is just about bringing the job to an end. This is our last coat of clear. Give you a good look at the car. Trying to get up and up and close to look at the orange peel. Turned out nice and clean. There's a couple of uh, bits of dust landed in it, but that's pretty standard. Nothing major. And if you follow these steps, you should be able to get the similar results too. So.
This is the car when it's all finished off. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a thing or two. Thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.